Joining us now for more is Capitol Police Officer Harry Dunn, who was there today at the Capitol watching the testimony. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, sir. You had suggested... Thank you. Uh, so appreciate you, you coming on and, and talking with us. You had suggested this morning that you thought today's testimony would trigger you. It, we saw you getting emotional earlier. Did you feel ultimately triggered by what you heard today? I don't necessarily know if I would just categorize it as triggered. I was angry and um, it really bothered me when I, uh, when I saw Sergeant Gunnell um, wiping away and dealing with his emotions. That was, that was tough for me to deal with. Also, when the um, the witness or the uh, he he spoke about how his life was ruined or it has changed and everything like that, well, he has four officers sitting in the front row whose lives have changed. Also, you have Sergeant Gunnell who just took, revealed to the public that he'll never be working again. You have Officer Fanone who's no longer as a police officer. Um, Daniel Hodges is struggling with being the poster boy of being crushed in the door against these rioters and also in the front row you had aaron smith the widow of jeffrey smith metropolitan police officer who committed suicide after responding on january 6th so you tell me those people's lives won't be the same so mm -hmm. I, I forgive me if i feel i fall short on the sympathy in right now um but yeah it's it's I, I'm, I'm focused on the other people right now that always have done the right thing and those are the people i'm focused on right now understood after the hearing ended witness stephen ayers turned to you and other members of law enforcement sitting in the front row and apologized for participating in the insurrection what was your response back while it was going on i just didn't acknowledge it like it, i mean i extended my hand but very reluctantly um i can't necessarily say i accept his apology um, it was received. I heard him and I shook his hand. But um, yeah, like I said, I'm focused on other people at the moment. And maybe maybe one day I will be able to accept it. I'm not one of these people that's going to say, I'll forget you, forget you forever. I'll never forget. I, I don't believe in that. I do believe in forgiveness. But at this moment, I'm sorry. I, nah, I got nothing for you. Did you feel any satisfaction by that apology? It's my understanding that, that going into today, you felt he owed an apology. Yeah, so, you know, I, yeah, not to me, fine, whatever, but he should have apologized on the microphone to the entire country, to mm. the entire American people. Um, this day is a stain, a black stain on a black mark on American history. And he is a part of that now. And he is guilty or he is charged, he has pled guilty in that. So he needs to apologize to the American people because this was a day that will go down. That day was a day that will go down in infamy. And um, he owed an apology to a lot more people than just me right there. And he had the opportunity to do it with the microphone on. Sergeant Gunnell was also seen today wiping tears away as Congressman Raskin praised him for his service that day and talked about how he cannot continue as a police officer because of his injuries, as you just mentioned. Before today's hearing, he felt betrayed by President Trump after hearing Cassidy Hutchins' ter uh, testimony. Uh, there's been so much speculation about what may ultimately happen with regard to former President Trump and criminal charges. What do you feel should happen? What would you like to see well, happen? You know, well, as, just like any other any other victim of any crime in in this country, I want justice, and um, the committee is doing their job of uh, deciding, well, determining the put, laying the facts out there about who was responsible for what. And once that full report is done, and the Justice Department is doing their investigation, that they need to level out the appro appropriate charges against any individual at any level whether that would be congressman, senator, president, aide, intern, doesn't matter. Anybody who committed some crimes on that day needs to be held accountable. And what accountability looks like to me, I guess it's just whatever it takes to prevent people from doing it again. Anybody, not just the person who did it, but anybody needs to send a message that this cannot happen and we won't accept this in our country. 
A large portion of today's hearing, of course, focused on that tweet from President Trump on December 19th. Big protest in D.C. on January 6th. Be there, will be wild. The committee says that that tweet galvanized his far-right supporters to descend on the Capitol. Far-right extremists knew what was happening that day. I'm curious if you or your colleagues had any sense when you showed up to work the potential for how bad things might get that day. No, and I think that's one of the frustrating things that um, so many people knew, apparently. And that's what we're learning through this testimony, how many people knew how bad it was going to be. And meanwhile, we're just sitting there, um, <laughs> let's use the term sitting ducks, right? And we're just sitting there. And um, like I said, I feel like it's safe to say I've dealt with over a thousand protests in my almost 15 year career at the U.S. Capitol. And um, the First Amendment protests, sure, that people get upset, their tempers flare, but never did I imagine that I would have faced anything like I we faced on January 6th. So no, I, I had, I thought it was gonna be a long day, but I didn't expect the level of violence to raise the way that it did. And taking a step back just for a moment, I'm sure that you have lived and relived that day more than 18 months ago so many times. Do you feel heartened, though, that officials are, are finally coming forward and, and in some ways peeling back the curtain on, on what happened that day and what led up to it? I don't I don't know. That's a difficult. I feel I look at different. Like, why did y'all take so long? Mm. Like, why? Why did you take so long to do it? Like, you knew that this was. Some people knew that this was going to happen. Um, I'm sure there were people that had like a bad feeling, like Cassidy Hutch, she said she had a bad feeling, or even Katrina Pearson that we learned today, this, this just doesn't sit right. Now, these, I don't know who they could have escalated to, but there's like, I, I honestly asked the question, there's really nothing that could have been done in advance to raise the alarm even more, to alert, to do something. There was nothing that could have been done and I, like I said, I don't ask that in a condescending manner. I really want an answer on um, what could have been done to prevent this, because this didn't need to happen. Capitol Police Officer Harry Dunn, we thank you so much for your time and your service. Really appreciate you coming on the show tonight. Thank you for having me on. It's good to talk with you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.